uh, uh, believe in what he stands for. We had a referendum last year, don't know if you're aware of it, where um, Scotland had the opportunity to break free from the United Kingdom. Yes. Um, and I was very much in favour of that because we wanted a, social, a socialist government. Let me, let me ask you this. Let's say 20 years from now you, you have that UT education, you have your big career and whatever, and you're doing good, would you be okay paying for somebody else's oh, tuition absolutely. at that point? Absolutely. I think it's for the responsibility of the upper class of America to take care of the lower class. Well, there you have it. The majority of the people we've talked to in the short time we've been here at the University of Texas support the Democrat socialist, Bernie Sanders. You can find more reports on InfoWars.com. Another question from the audience? Yeah, Kid Daniels, InfoWars.com. Uh, Dr. Paul, if you could debate Bernie Sanders, what would you say to him? And what would you say to the supporters who think that socialism works? What would I say to Jim Bernie? To Bernie and, and, and his supporters. His supporters. You know, I, uh, the closest thing I came, I, Bernie and I got along pretty well and we talked a lot, knew exactly where we stood and respected each other's views. And I think Bernie might have voted to audit the Fed. If I'm not mistaken, uh, so he, uh, so given the benefit of the doubt, but I, the closest I came to a real debate with somebody like Bernie Sanders was with Barney Frank up at the University of Pennsylvania, and uh, and the the point that I try to make is, you know, you do well as a principal progressive, and I can do this with uh, Dennis Kucinich, uh, who I know I know very well. Uh, and say, well, you know, you want, you don't want to use force in the military. You want to protect civil liberties and you don't like all this war. And sometimes Dennis and I would be the only two voting against some war position. But I said, why, why, and I proposed this to Barney too, is why is it that you won't apply that same principle to, you know, that you apply to social engagement, you know, in, in, uh, in social and sexual matters? hands off as long as it's voluntary and nobody the government just should be out of it they should be out of marriage and everything else and they agree with that i said why don't you apply that to economics and they, they come up and they say they understand the consistency they say well um it's uh, uh it's different because mark free freedom in markets allow people to become too rich you know and then they run it and they own everything and they will not listen to the argument that there's a difference between somebody getting bailed out by the Federal Reserve and they're on the specialist versus somebody who produces a good product and we vote them their money and they haven't cheated or stolen or given us bad products and they make a lot of money. Why? I, I think it's sort of a, an envy and resentment, uh, but I talked to them, but I have to tell you that uh, so far I haven't converted many uh, diehard progressives because some progressives if you watch it on the internet, uh, we'll have really close agreements and they might, you know, be talking about the same issue, but boy, they don't want to even introduce the notion that the libertarians are with them on this because they're terrified that we might encroach on their power to redistribute wealth. So it, it's a tough argument, but that's, that's because they uh, have a stronger belief. Others are sort of in the middle and they can be influenced and they can, they can be converted. Shane Steiner's involvement with InfoWarsLife.com truly happened in an organic way. I went to high school with Shane, his brother, knew his parents well, and he was visiting the office once, hadn't been to the office in years, and said, wow, I notice you're making and selling supplements. Do these really work? Because I've tried a lot of supplements as a, a workout enthusiast, and I really think most of them are hype. And I said, here, take some home, try it. Well, a few weeks later, he came in blown away and said, I want to buy three boxes of this stuff to get my friends and family. It's simply amazing. He said, why does it work so well? And I said, listen, go to InfoWarsLife.com, watch the informational videos with Dr. Group and others. They understand how it all works. I know that it works for me. That's all I understand. The science, the facts, the research, people's testimonials, they're all on InfoWarsLife.com. You can check it out for yourself. I wanted to go to the gym. I wanted to push myself and work out harder. And that led to me being able to come out and do stuff like the 
barefooting and the surfing and stuff like that, which what I would have never done. I, I never would have done that uh, two years ago. Shane has said over and over again, more than just libido and energy, it made him want to get into the gym more. It made him want to get in better shape. And believe me, the Steiners have amazing genetics. Uh, his brother is a world champion steer wrestler. His dad, Bobby Steiner, is a famous world champion bull rider. They've got natural genetics. But when you added this to the mix, in Shane's own words, it took him to the next level. Shane noticed the mental clarity. Bobby was able to work out longer and gain muscle mass. He's already completely shredded. I gotta admit, for me, the biggest effect has been libido. Now, I've never claimed to have a body like some beach model, but back when I was 20, 22 years old and worked out every day, I looked great. But over the years, and being married, having three kids, and working 18 hours a day, I gained basically 100 pounds. And it's been a long process of losing that weight in the last four years. But if you look at the photos and the videos of what I looked like four or five years ago versus today, the results results are dramatic. I'd already cleaned up my diet, I was working out hard, but I'd only lost about 20 pounds. It was adding the other key ingredients from InfoWarsLife.com that helped me personally go to the next level and shed another 35 pounds. This has actually made me feel so good that uh, here, late, about a year ago, I started training jiu-jitsu, and that kind of led to doing some boxing and kickboxing. I mean, it's, it's amazing that two years ago, I was on the couch and couldn't even tie my shoes, and now I'm training with MMA fighters and uh, just doing stuff that I never thought that I'd, I would be doing ever again. So Super Male Vitality has allowed me to do some amazing things, and if it has those kind of effects for me, I know that it will do great things for you. So just try Super Male Vitality. I promise you, you'll love it. And finally, let's look at Anthony Gucciardi, InfoWars.com reporter. He also works with Dr. Group and others helping develop the newest, most cutting edge, high quality supplements. Let's take a look at what happened when he tried to barefoot ski for the first time with the Steiners. And remember, we're not making fun of him. He had the will to get in the arena and he's lost more than 10 pounds in the last few years of fat and gained more than 10 pounds of muscle. And Anthony chalks it up to super male vitality as well. Bottom line, folks, you want to discover the power of super male vitality and super female vitality for yourself by visiting InfoWarsLife.com today or by calling toll-free 888 -253 -3139. Well, what might be some good news for Flint residents, the FBI has joined the Flint, Michigan water contamination probe. Now, they're going to explore whether any laws were broken in this crisis that has, of course, captured international attention. Federal prosecutors in Michigan are now working with an investigative team that includes the FBI, the U.S. Postal Inspection Service, the U.S. EPA, uh, their Office of Inspector General and the EPA's Criminal Investigation Division. Now, of course, their governor there, he's been apologizing repeatedly for the state's poor handling of this crisis. And Peter Henning, who is a law professor at Wayne State University in Detroit, he's also a former federal, federal prosecutor, he said it would be a challenge to bring criminal charges, though Michigan state law does provide some more options. Uh, specifically, he cites Michigan's misconduct in office law and neglect of duty misdemeanor offense. Now, in Washington, the Senate is expected to vote this week on an amendment to an energy bill that is sponsored by Michigan Democratic senators. There, uh, it'll provide up to $600 million to Flint they're gonna help replace the pipes and provide health care. And uh, this article says that the measure faces an uphill battle in the Republican-led chamber. So of course, this is another opportunity for all of you activists out there, everyone who's been concerned, all of you celebrities who sent water, well now it's time to take it the extra mile, stay on these people, keep their feet to the fire, and of course, keep calling your state reps and telling them to demand they do something for Flint. Now, Lord knows we waste taxpayer money on all 
sorts of other crazy things. And of course, you know, I'd love to call on the auto industry uh, who destroyed and decimated Flint, Michigan. Of course, the taxpayers bailed you out billions of dollars. I feel like the least you could do is, uh, you know, and you, you don't pay taxes here in the country. So the least you could do is help out Flint. I'm going to put that call out there. Now, here's something else that really pissed me off when I read it today. Parents are suing a school. They forced her daughter to convert to Islam for one of her assignments. So these are parents in Maryland. They're suing a public school administrators over concerns that a classroom lesson attempted to indoctrinate their daughter into the Islamic faith. Now we uh, have obtained these court documents. They're linked in this article up at InfoWars. So they're saying that they were assigned lessons and homework in her 11th grade world history class. It required students to profess statements on the teachings and beliefs of Islam in written worksheets as graded homework assignments. Assignments. They were instructed that most Muslims' faith is stronger than the average Christian. They also had to profess the Shahada, which is basically saying there is no God but Allah. Um, and of course, the family took issue with this because they're Christians. And they say that their daughter was also instructed that jihad is a holy war waged on behalf of Islam as a religious duty. And they had to read texts from the Quran and, and learn the uh, learn and recite the five pillars of Islam. So this went on for two weeks in this class. And they say, in contrast, they spent about a day discussing Christianity, but they never covered the Bible. They never talked about the Ten Commandments. I'm sure they didn't talk about Buddhism or Hinduism or any other religions. Why two weeks? Why is this a world history assignment? Why is this happening again and again in classrooms nationwide? What is going on here? If they had made the class recite the Ten Commandments, they probably would have been sued, as we've seen again and again. What happened to the whole separation of church and state argument? Of course, you're not hearing it here. What is going on? Now, something else that's also really confusing, and a lot of people are now calling out the feds for this, uh, our governor, Greg Abbott, and the U.S. Representative Henry Quaylar, the Department of Homeland Security has announced that they are going to reduce aerial surveillance on the Texas border by 50 percent. And this is at a time when we know that the border is wide open. There's a, a huge surge happening here. And th they go on to point out that we've had a huge surge in migrants from Central America and Cuba along the southern border. So they're saying the DHS should actually be increasing surveillance and security resources, not fewer. They're um, citing instances of in 115% increase since 2014 in undocumented immigrants crossing. Um, amount of family units coming over has increased by 170%. And the El Paso sector reports an increase of almost 300% in unaccompanied minors. So indeed, what is going on here. Well, America, if you haven't noticed, Middle Eastern and African refugees are raping, looting, and killing all over Europe. And the European establishment is condemning the citizens on their behavior, rather than that of the invading hordes of fraudulent young male refugees who claim to be fleeing war-ravaged hellholes. <laughs> For years now, those refugees have been coming to America. But it hasn't been large cities like Washington, D.C. and San Francisco due to their high cost of living. It's smaller American cities that are being targeted to become refugee sanctuary cities, exactly as tiny European towns had been targeted. Rather than integrate all of the refugees into large cities where aid facilities are better funded and menial jobs may be more plentiful, the Obama administration has been directing pockets of the refugees into smaller to medium-sized American cities that are already struggling to survive. Cities like Missoula, Montana, Twin Falls, Idaho, and Stone Mountain, Georgia, a population of 6,025, where a huge boon to the economy is the tourism generated by the Stone Mountain carving of Confederate generals, the very historical monument the liberals want destroyed. It was revealed around this time last year by political analyst 
Susan Payne, who had inadvertently been allowed to attend an Obama White House conference call on the Syrian refugee strategy. Payne discovered that the intent of the Obama administration is to grow the Muslim seedling communities, in their words, into larger entities, eventually overtaking the smaller cities they had been given sanctuary in as part of the greater plan to overtake the host nation. The Obama task force even discussed replacing the Thanksgiving holiday with Celebrate Immigrant Day.